I played 100 days of Cult of the Lamb. Hello everybody, this is Gamergar. Welcome to a Cult of the Lamb video. Today I'm going to play through 100 in-game days and try to complete every single achievement in the game. So we start off as a lowly lamb ready to be sacrificed but the one who waits offers us a deal we simply cannot refuse. And for our life, we need to take down the old gods that imprisoned him. Taking down the old gods will be no easy feat, we will have to assemble a cult, we will have to amass tons of followers, lots of power and lots of murder weapons. The first thing we do of course is name our first cultist Pam, and Pam is from, you guessed it, Stardew Valley Pelican Town. Pam will be the first of many Stardew Valley Pelicans to come onto this farm and help us change the world, massacre the gods and make sure that our farm is the coziest cult farm around. So the first thing we do here now is gather some raw materials, make a cooking station and we get Pam to allow us access to the first dungeon the game has to offer, which is the Darkwood Dungeon. There's four primary dungeons in this game, each dungeon will house some mini bosses and one primary boss. Once we get into Darkwood we grab our lovely Crusader Sword and we let the lamb slain action begin. After a couple of combat rooms, we encounter the first boss for a nice cozy chat. Now she is a bit confused as to why we are still alive, but after he learns the truth, he's not going to make life that easy for us at all. We do get to the first mini boss however, and we will have to destroy a few of these before we can face off against Leji himself. Once the mini boss is dead, a follower will pop out and we can recruit that into our lovely cult. We can even change the name and the appearance of these followers, making for some great customization. Penny is next up on the list and she will join our lovely cult. Now we have Pam and Penny ready to go. The next thing we're going to do is build a shrine and we need this to gather devotion to unlock some powerful structures that we can build to enhance our cult. Pierre is given as a freebie but we'll take him nonetheless, we will use the devotion he gives to build a temple and we can use the temple to do all sorts of fantastic things in this game such as sermons, sacrifices, resurrections, marriage, you name it, you can do it inside this temple. Once the temple has been built, we will do our very first sermon and the reason why sermons are so important is because they will allow us to draw on the strength of our followers to bolster the power of the red crown on our head which will give us access to stronger weapons and magical abilities. So the day counter has officially begun, it is now day one and we're going to spend this day collecting all of the resources on this lovely farm. We have access to wood, stone and berry bushes. So we can use our followers to help us gather those resources or we can use them to worship the shrine which will give us devotion and we can use that devotion to unlock structures such as the sleeping bag that will allow our followers to sleep in peace. So we go back into Darkwood the next day and Ratau gives us the ability to use magical abilities. The first magical ability doesn't seem too exciting, it is just your run of the mill projectile attack. We also come across Harrow here and Harrow explains the importance of commandment stones and we can get commandment stones every time a follower levels up. You can also get them from killing bosses as well inside of dungeons. Once we have a full commandment tablet made, we can go into the church and we can unlock some powerful rituals and passive traits that will enhance the way our cult acts. Another mini boss has been felled today, this means we're one step closer to fighting Leshy. We also get access to Gus here now and we're going to indoctrinate him straight into the cult and we're also going to use our commandment stone to unlock the bonfire ritual. The bonfire ritual is really handy for increasing faith with all of the followers in our lovely cult. We're also going to build some lovely farm plots here which will allow us to grow crops. We do have the plant fertilizer and we have to water the crops every day but eventually we will be able to automate this task using our lovely cultists. Pam has a quest for us today and she wants us to give the cult a name. So without further ado we are going to call this cult the Cozy Tozy Cult. <laughs> it is going to be the coziest cult around. For the rest of day number 3 we are going back into Darkwood Dungeon. We just got our hands on a Bane Axe here which is a nice upgrade from the Crusader Axe. Killing this mini boss now means that we have the requirements to go ahead and fight Leshy which is the main boss. We just have to go back into the Darkwood Dungeon one more time, make it through the random floors and we will be able to take on a god. But before we do so it is time to get Abigail and Leah into our lovely cozy tozy cult. What a great help they are going to be. Because we had so many Stardew Valley Pelicans now inside our cult, 
I decided to treat them to a lovely, cozy bonfire ritual, just to make them all feel right at home. I also went to Ratao's lonely shack here, and I got a follower farm, which is great. That means I have access to more follower types now if I want to make more follower types in the future. I took Ratao on in a game of knuckle bones, and I won. This means I could challenge him again in the future and bet money if I'm low on gold. So I spent the start of today making lots of food for my lovely followers so they don't starve to death. Abigail had a quest for me as well to make some grassy gruels as she was a bit hungry. After making some grassy gruels, Abigail was super happy with me and her loyalty increased, giving her a level up. The higher level a cultist is, the more beneficial they can be when it comes to converting them to demons, sending them on quests, sacrificing and ascending them. Level ups also give lots of devotion, which means I can go into the skill tree here and unlock more structures to make our lovely cult even cozier. So I got the farming bundle there and it was time to go into the work and worship doctrine skill tree and we're going to go with the faithful trade, which means that all members of this cult will generate devotion 15% faster once that ritual has been activated. Abigail had another quest here and she says that there's a rumor going around that Pierre is a spy and she didn't want him to undermine our great power, so she wanted me to go speak with him to find out what he was up to. I went straight over to Pierre to ask what was up, and Pierre seemed to be in a great mood. He said it was a beautiful day today, so I didn't find anything suspicious with Pierre at the moment. We also managed to level up our cult to level two, which means our shrine now gets a little bigger and we can collect more devotion. I went back to Darkwood the next day and we found the fisherman NPC here and he gave us a new location that we can visit on the map called Pilgrim's Passage. We can actually go there to fish to our heart's content. We were now in the final stretch of the Darkwood dungeon, just a few floors to go and we could face off against Leshy the God himself. Leshy is the first of four primary bosses in this game so because he's the first he shouldn't give us a whole lot of trouble. We were advanced where we were at the moment in this game because we've had so much devotion generation and because we've had so much power ups in terms of weapons so it didn't take us too long to wipe Leshy off the face of the planet. <laughs> As we can see his health is going down really fast, he does summon minions occasionally, we just have to watch out for the spikes that come out of the ground when he decides to run away from us. Once Leshy has been destroyed he does explode and he drops a heart called the heart of a heretic we can use this to gain a unique passive ability that we can take with us on crusades. I also got a Leshy trophy, which is a unique decoration that you can make only one of and we can place that on the farm once we have required the materials to do so. So when I got back to the cozy tozy farm, my cultists were super happy with my progress and they cheered me on as I showed them the heart of a god. It was now time to go back into our devotion skill tree and I got the shelter upgrade this time which means I can now upgrade the sleeping bags to shelters. It was time to indoctrinate another member into our cult, Elliot was his name and what a great help he will be in the near future. It was also time to upgrade the sleeping bags with shelters. Shelters don't break down half as much as sleeping bags so we should be able to save on resources when it comes to repairing some of the structures in the game. So I'm going to go with the darkness within perk here from the heart that I got from Leshy it just means that I get a diseased heart at the start of every crusade run that I do. Damage with a diseased heart will damage all enemies in the area. So now we're going to go with the sustenance tree and we're going to take the feasting ritual. This is in my opinion is one of the best rituals in the game. Not only will it fill up all of the hunger bars for every single cultist on your farm, but it will also give you plus 25 faith as well. It's such a great ritual and all you need to do that ritual are just bones. So we went back into the Darkwood dungeon today and we met an NPC here named Harrow and Harrow basically says that because Leshy is now dead, some monsters want to try and take his place. As a result, the enemies in the Darkwood dungeon are now a lot tougher to deal with, so basically they have more health. In order for us to get all of the lovely Darkwood collectibles, for example the decorations and the follower farms, a few Darkwood runs will be required. What we're fighting here now is an enemy called a witness and this only pops up once you've beaten the main boss of a dungeon. So the witness will drop a special item which is called the eye of a witness and the eye of the witness is basically a quest item that we need for later on in the game. So we're going to get Harvey and Sebastian into the cult here now. Our Stardew Valley teamed cult is getting bigger by the day. Penny has a quest for us here to get rid of all the poop that's currently on the farm. As if too much poop accumulates it will affect the hygiene of the farm and our lovely cultists could get sick and they could even die. So it is important to come back to the farm every few days especially for dungeon crawling and make sure it's nice and clean. 
So we had plenty of devotion to collect here from our lovely shrine, we can use that now in a second and unlock more structures. Because we completed the quest for Penny, she gets a huge loyalty buff and she even gets a level up giving us even more devotion and her stats also go up as well. So it's very important to try to increase the levels of the cultists every single day. So we're going back into this sustenance tree here and we're going to get the grass eater trait. This removes the negative buff from the grassy gruel making it quite the potent meal to make in bulk. We also spend the rest of the night pulling some fish up out of the water because we can sell the fish later on for gold and we're going to need lots of gold to make the ultimate cozy tribe. The fisherman also gives us a quest to fish up four unique fish and he will give us a fleece token for every unique fish that we find. He even gives us a tarot card that we can now unlock inside of the crusades where enemies have a chance to drop fish when we slay them. Upon fishing I noticed a cool NPC here that rose up out of the water. He just wanted a fish this time so he's going to give us a fleece token for that. He will however ask for a lot more interesting things as this 100 day challenge goes on. I also visited the lighthouse and I turned some logs into the stove there and the lighthouse keeper was super happy as a result he will now worship the super cozy tozy cult. More devotion for us on a daily basis which is great. So we're on day number 9 now and we're going back into the Darkwood dungeon to get more collectibles. If we find followers like this that are stranded, we'll recruit those straight away. I also came across a weird looking cat NPC here, but she had a few collectibles I needed including the Ambrosia Tarot card that can increase my physical damage. I also killed another mini boss, got a commandment stone, got some gold and some bones. It was time to indoctrinate Shane into our lovely cozy tozy cult. Shortly after, Sebastian came up to me with another quest asking me to take on some sick followers. I said yes of course, because the more followers the better. If I declined I would lose that fate, so I accepted. So we got Alex and George added, now they do come with a sick debuff, but plenty of sleep will see to that in just a few days. So it's time for another sustenance trade, the ritual of oceans of bounty. This will make fishing super lucrative, as you're going to get a lot more bang for your buck. So now when we pull a fish up out of the water, we are going to get tons of fish, not just one or two. The fish also spawn faster and more rare fish also appear. So I fished into the next day and as a result I got all of the rare fish that the fisherman NPC needed to complete all of his quests. Four rare fish for the fisherman NPC meant four fleece tokens for me. I went back to the farm and I sold all of the fish that I had accumulated. Some fish sold for 20 gold apiece, other fish just sold for 3 or 4 or 5 gold. But even so, I got tons of gold from this, which means I was able to get lots of upgrades done. So Penny came up to me today and she asked me to make her a bowl of poop as she wanted to eat it as it was a deep dark desire of hers. I of course, being the lovely cozy leader that I am, offered to fulfill her request. That night when everyone was asleep, I woke Penny up and ordered her to eat the bowl of poop. <laughs> she did so, she did feel really sick after it, but I did get a loyalty bonus from her which was great and I didn't lose any faith. Penny however would more than likely be out of commission for the next few days. It was time to break into another commandment tree, we were going to go down the work and worship route again and we were going to get the inspire trade which replaces the bless function, it just means we can give a lot more loyalty to our cultists every single day, leveling them up faster. With all the gold I had from selling the fish I bought all of the tarot cards at the pilgrim's passage and I went back into the darkwood dungeon to farm more bosses to get more resources. Lumber and stone were on the high priority list of course. Any extra commandment stones I got was also a welcome bonus as the more traits I got and passive abilities the stronger the cult would be. So Emily was indoctrinated into the cult today and shortly after she was up to her usual Emily antics asking us to pull a foul prank on Alex ordering him to eat a bowl of poop. I accepted the quest because I didn't want to lose 25 faith. Another day means another commandment we can unlock so we're going back to the work and worship and this time we're going to get a ritual of enlightenment and this is a really good one because it increases devotion generation speed by 20% for 3 days once the ritual becomes active and I activated it straight away because I had the resources to do so. So that was a huge boon for me. I also got the golden fleece from the fleece tokens that I've been saving up. The golden fleece is one of the most overpowered fleeces in the game. It will increase damage dealt on enemies to more enemies I slay. However, the damage will decrease back to zero if I take damage. And additionally, if I take damage, I will take double damage. So it is a double-edged sword. 
So we're going into a new dungeon today. This is called Anuga. And we just wiped out the first mini boss there, no problem at all, with our lovely golden fleece. So this time we were going to indoctrinate Haley into our lovely cult. What a pleasure she would be, of course. I also made some camps here that generate lumber and stone. So every couple of days I can just go to the chests and stack up on those resources. I also had refining structures to process those materials further to make more advanced structures. So we're going to go with the Holy Day Ritual. And this basically puts everyone on a break for one whole day. But it does give you a massive faith increase which can be super handy for certain parts of the game. Especially if calamities befall the cult. And trust me, calamities will certainly befall the cult later on. <laughs> So I spent a great deal of today inspiring my cultists, leveling them up, making them stronger, getting more devotion, unlocking more structures. As per Emily's request, I forced poor Alex to eat a bowl of poop. He didn't seem too impressed after it. He went straight back to bed and hopefully that will be the end of that and nobody will find out except of course, Emily. <laughs> Emily however was impressed. She did get a lot of loyalty from that and she leveled up which was great and also gave me more devotion. Back into the temple today, and this time we were going to the afterlife tree, and we're going to get the belief in sacrifice trade. This means that if a member is sacrificed, other cultists will get more devotion. Because Gus was gone really old, he wasn't much of a hand now on the farm anymore. It was time to sacrifice him to the great beyond, free up some resources, and make everyone else in the cult super happy. And super happy they were. Look at all the lovely power I got here for the Red Crown. And with this power, I was able to go straight into the next tier, Might of Devotion Tree, unlocking new powerful weapons and magical abilities. Before I went back in for Dungeon Crawl, I came across an NPC here named Helab, and he was selling a follower here that I could indoctrinate for just 50 gold. Because I had some money lying around the place, I said why not, and teleported that lovely follower into our lovely cozy cozy tribe. I also found some weird looking mushroom people today, they taught me about their leader Sozo and his quest to find magical mushrooms. They also pinpointed his location on my map and this opened up a new location where I could visit called the Spore Grotto and that will have lots of collectibles and items that I can get my hands on later on. It was time to fight a new mini boss today and I had a 235% damage bonus thanks to my golden fleece so just a few hits on this boss should be enough to pack him in straight away. I kept my distance and used my magical ability. Because if you can beat a boss without taking damage, you do get a bonus when it comes to resources. Clint joins our lovely cult today and we get the ritual of resurrection added to our lovely ritual repertoire. This can be super helpful if we need to resurrect any of the previous cultists that have died. And when they are resurrected, they even come back at a younger age. Speaking of resurrection, Shane wanted us to bring Gus back from the dead. We of course accepted the quest because we didn't want to lose any faith with the lovely cult. And after this lovely farming patch has been built, we went straight into the temple and we took on the ritual of resurrection and brought Gus back to life. Everyone was super happy. Gus had a new beginning. We then went to the Spore Grotto to check things out, lots of new decorations to buy, tarot cards to buy, but more importantly, Sozo the NPC had a lovely quest chain for us to complete. The first quest of course was just to give him some mushrooms to get the ball rolling, just 10 mushrooms in total. This in turn would give us a fleece token. And activate the next quest, which is just to go out into the wild and find him more mushrooms. <laughs> We went back into the Anura dungeon today, just fought another mini boss here. We killed him very quickly because we had a 210% damage on the Golden Fleece, so it didn't take too many strikes to kill him. When we went back to the farm, we got the Cold Tree upgrade. This in turn makes our lovely Devotion statue bigger, meaning it can hold a lot more Devotion, so we can get upgrades a lot faster. It was time to indoctrinate Demetrius and Robin into our lovely Cozy Tozy cult. What a joy it would be to have more Stardew Valley NPCs ready to work and sacrifice themselves for us. We're also going to get the Respect Your Elders trade, which means that the more elders we have on the farm, the more fate that gets generated every single day. Emily gave us a quest to recruit an elderly follower, just the one, so I said okay, why not? And this is going to be Evelyn, welcome to the Cozy Tozy Cult. Now Evelyn is very old so she won't be much good to us on the farm but not to worry, I'm sure we'll find a use for Evelyn down the road. I also got the Ritual Cooldown passive today, which is great. 
So Emily had another request for us today. She thought the first time we tricked Alex into eating a bowl of poop was hilarious. She wanted us to do it again. Emily was just so troublesome. What she had against Alex, I don't know, but of course I accepted because I didn't want to lose faith in Emily. I also got the return to art trade today, and that just means if someone dies, I can just put them into a compost bin and I can use their body for fertilizer. Back to the spore grotto, I gave Sozo more mushrooms and he showed me how to do the brainwashing ritual, which is totally overpowered. Perform a ritual at your temple that brainwashes all your followers. Faith will be locked at full for two days, regardless of what happens. <laughs> I went straight back to my farm, straight into the temple, assembled all of my cultists, I got them all high on mushrooms. All of my cultists were now unshakable faith believers for the next two days. Nothing could shake my cultists. Not even the death of poor Abigail who died of old age. Sure, my cultists did get sick all over poor Abigail as they couldn't just comprehend what was happening as I minced Abigail's body up for follower meat because I didn't have the compost bin yet to turn Abigail into fertilizer. But their faith did not go down and the sick was quickly cleaned up by our lovely janitors. Next up, Alex had a quest. He says there's nowhere to poop. He wanted some outhouses. He wanted two in total. I of course said yes to this and would make it my priority to make some outhouses for Alex. I think at this rate, he deserved it. I also got a mushroom sculpture and I got a fleece token off Sozo for completing the brainwashing ritual. If I make that mushroom sculpture, that will complete the end of the Sozo quest chain, getting me more lovely collectibles from my cozy tozy farm. So, we were now on day 23, we're definitely getting through it, and I just made two outhouses there, which means Alex will be pleased. I went straight over to Alex and told him the outhouses were built. He was truly grateful for that, and that got him a lovely level up, making him a stronger, more loyal cultist for me. Then straight back into the temple for the Law and Order Doctrine, and we were going to go with the Ascend Follower Ritual. It performs a ritual at your temple in which you can ascend a follower's spirit into the great beyond. We were going to ascend Pierre as he was now old and not very useful for our lovely cozy tozy farm. So Pierre, thank you for your service. May we meet again in the great beyond. Everybody was in great form after Pierre had ascended. This got lots and lots of loyalty levels from my followers. I spent the whole day leveling up followers from Pierre's lovely ascension to greatness. Not only did I get loads of level ups, I also got tons and tons of devotion, which allowed me to get tons and tons of structure unlocks at the shrine. So I got the wedding doc shrine today. This means I can marry my lovely loyal cultists whenever I feel like it, and I can marry as many cultists as I want. So I went to the Darkwood dungeon today because I got a quest from a follower to go into the Darkwood dungeon and to locate their missing friend, and that's what we just did. We also killed the mini boss today, we got some gold, we got some bones, we got some stone, we got some resources that we could use back on the lovely cozy tozy farm. So another follower died today unfortunately, it was Elliot this time he died of old age. We also had Evelyn dying of old age too, now we all knew Evelyn was going to die soon because she was old when we got her. So I minced them up, this didn't shake the fate of any of the cult members because they were all <laughs> still high on mushrooms from the ritual that we did there a few days ago. Thank God for the brainwashing ritual. There was also lots of devotion on my shrine to get so I collected all that. Then I went into my temple and I got a new trait here called the belief in absolution trait. It just means that when everyone wakes up if there's nobody in prison, they all get a huge faith increase. It was time to sacrifice Penny as she was now very old, well beyond her prime and not much good to us in the lovely cozy tozy farm, but she was a high level follower and her sacrifice did give us access to the lovely godly weapons, the strongest weapons in the game, thank you very much Penny. It was time to brighten up the mood with a wedding, I asked Robin to be my bride, she of course said yes, being high on mushrooms had absolutely nothing to do with it, and I'm sure of course Demetrius didn't mind as he was in a totally different game. So it was time to indoctrinate a new cultist, this time it was going to be Jess. I also gave my new wife Robin a skull necklace which would double her lifespan so she would live for a very long time with me. It was time to cure up some of our followers, a lot of followers have gotten sick lately. So we started with Robin of course since she was now my most valuable cultist because we were married and I spent the rest of the day healing up the others as well. So I got the loyalty enforcer pork today and I made Robin my loyalty enforcer. She would spend her days increasing the loyalty stats of all of the cultists on the farm. 
So it was time for another dungeon crawl. This time I got the godly sword, the strongest sword in the game. It was time to fight some enemies, kill some gods. But before we can get to the god in question, there was a few rooms that we had to complete, including a room here with an NPC called Flinky, which told us she would be at the Lonely Shack if we wanted to play Knucklebones with her. In the next room, I found an NPC called Raksasha, who got very irritated every time I hit this giant snail here with my weapon. After hitting the snail enough times, Raksasha finally lost the plot and attempted to fight me. After a few swings from my weapon, I was able to best Raksasha in combat. So what happens here is, Raksasha will now give me a special blueprint, it's called a monster shrine. You can build that shrine back on the farm, you can only make it once, but at night time, if I pray to this shrine, it will give me a special follower form, so this is something you need in order to get perfection inside the game. It was finally time to fight the second main boss of this game, known as Hecate. Now, I did come into this room with a very high damage multiplier because I had the Golden Fleece of 225%. I also had a godly sword, so heck it <laughs> didn't last very long at all. I literally wiped out this boss in just a few strikes. I got another Heart of the Heretic. I could bring this back to the base and use this to get another passive ability when I'm going on my lovely dungeon crawls. I was met with loads of praise from my loyal cultists, things were looking great. So, it was now time to indoctrinate Jody into our lovely cult. What a gem she will be. We're also going to go down to Possessions Tree this time and we're going to get the Bribe Follower perk. This will allow us to bribe followers to increase their loyalty. We also went back to the Enura dungeon and we took on the witness here just to get the eye of the witness that's needed for the chain quest later on in the game. I decided to just do it now and get it over with. I also got a new follower, the eye of the witness quest item and lots of gold and goodies to boot. I also decided to do another loop of this dungeon. You can do up to a total of three loops in a dungeon every single day. This is just the second loop that I did and this is just another mini boss. Not too threatening at all, wipe that boss out no problem. So I went for the collectibles, I was going for the blueprints here because I wanted to get all of the Anura collectibles because I was going for the, uh, the platinum trophy of course. I also came across a cool room here where you could sacrifice some health and get a damage increase. But damage increase is only accessible for this dungeon run only. Once you leave this dungeon, you lose all those perks. And on loop number 3, I made it to the last mini boss. This guy just jumps around the place, he's nothing special. He died after a couple of swings there from my giant hammer. Then it was back to the farm and it was time to indoctrinate loads more Stardew Valley NPCs. So we got Kent, Krobus, Leo, Lewis and Linus all added to our lovely cozy tozy farm. We also got the belief in materialism and the cult level 4 which is the maximum level the cult can actually have so now we could potentially make all of the greatest structures in the game. I ran around the farm today and I went to the lumber and the stone mills today just to get all of the wood and the stone that was left over. Once all of these resources had been collected I then got the cult to replace them and build new structures in their place. So I'm going to get the aims for the poor ritual today, and this is a very overpowered ritual. You just have to give a little bit of gold out of your own pockets, and you'll get huge loyalty bonuses from all of the cultists on the lovely farm. It was day number 31, and I did some farming activities today, just putting some fertilizer into the fertilizer bin, and some seeds into the seeds bin. The cultists will come along eventually, and they will take those items, and they will use it to keep the farm going. George unfortunately passed away today. I didn't, however, mince him up. Instead, I wrapped up his body and put him into a huge compost bin. George will be used for fertilizer in the days to come. So George, even in death, is contributing to the lovely cult. It was time to send Demetrius on a quest today to get some stone, shortly followed by the courageous Shane to get some lumber. Now there is a chance that your cultists can die when they go on these quests, but they were high level cultists, the odds were stacked in their favour. So we get a godly dagger today and we are back doing some dungeon crawling. So we're inside the Darkwood dungeon today, just doing more quests and we're also looking for more blueprints. So we got the acquired stone wall today. And we also got the stone candle. And we also fought the lovely witness. That's going to drop even more valuable resources for us as well. So we did some loops today inside the Darkwood Dungeon because I wanted to get all of the collectibles today. So I didn't really have to go back into the Darkwood Dungeon anymore. Getting lumber is always a good way to go about things. And stone because you always need those. Later on that day I came home and Gus passed away of old age. He lived two lives. What a man! 
we put Gus into our lovely compost bin and he would be used for fertilizer later on. So Marnie, Sandy and Vincent are all new additions to our lovely cozy tozy cult. We're also going to get the devotee trade today as well, which means more members will get fate bonuses when sermons are done. It was now time to ascend a follower, Sebastian lived a great life. He was however past his prime and it was time to send him to the great beyond. Thank you Sebastian for your lovely cult activities. We got loads of loyalty boosts from Sebastian's ascension. For the rest of the day I decided to do some fishing as I needed some gold badly. So I pulled up loads of fish today. Shortly after I went back to the farm it was time to collect some resources as there was plenty of stone and wood to collect. This means I could do a lot more upgrades on the farm and put down a lot more structures to make some serious expansions. So I came across a follower today during my usual activities and this follower was totally spaced out and he wasn't on magic mushrooms. It's been a while since I did a brainwashing activity. I checked again at night time and this follower was still there. I didn't know who it was, which Stardew Valley Pelican Town it was, but they were totally spaced out. They did however snap out of it the next day, which was good. Speaking of the next day, it was time to go into a new dungeon. This one is called Anchor Deep and it housed a new boss for us to slay and new enemies of course to fight. So during our time in this dungeon there was new collectibles to get, new follower farms to unlock and new followers of course to bring into our lovely Tozy Cozy cult. Willy and Rasmodius, Birdie and Gil will join the ever-growing Stardew Valley Pelican Town cult. With all of the new resources I was getting, it was time to upgrade our shelters to grand shelters. And the great thing about these shelters is that they never break down, and they will give even greater bonuses to my lovely cozy cultists. It was time for another ascension. This time Emily was way past her prime, it was time to send her to the great beyond. Thank you Emily for your service. We were all sad to see her go, probably except Alex of course, because of the cruel pranks that she pulled on poor Alex. It was back into the Anchor Deep dungeon, we found an NPC here named Clunko and Bop, and this is a new NPC we can play in the Knucklebones minigame over at the Lonely Shack location. We also encountered our next mini boss and this was a simple enough fight as well. We just had to watch out for the projectiles and the teleportation that this boss did all around the map. It was quite difficult to hit him sometimes but we got there eventually. Destroying the boss, getting our hands on a new follower which we would indoctrinate later on. I did come home to a cult full of sick people but I had the healing bay and I was able to heal all of them pretty quickly. Afterwards it was time to welcome Marilyn to our lovely cozy tozy farm. It was also time to get all of the fertilizer out of these outhouses because I needed it to grow some more crops to keep my cultists fed, to keep them happy and to prevent them from destroying the place. <laughs> it was also time to collect all of the lumber from all these lovely lumber yards. The more lumber I could collect, the more I could process into planks, the more advanced buildings I could make. So I started making more refineries, I started upgrading refineries. I also started making more statues like this which would increase my devotion production because once devotion has been maxed out, instead of getting devotion you would get money instead, trivializing the difficulty of this game. So we had another day of the Anchor Deep Dungeon, we came across a new NPC called Plimbo. And Plimbo would have a very interesting question for us indeed. He marked the location of his place on our map called Smuggler's Sanctuary and this holds lots of follower farms and of course decorations that we can use for our farm later on. So it was time to fight another mini boss and the hammer weapons despite the fact that they're really slow when they hit they do a lot of damage. Hammer weapons in my opinion are best used with magical abilities that slow enemies down. It was time to get Morris and Mr. Key indoctrinated into our lovely cozy cult. So that was more or less all of the Stardew Valley NPCs that we were going to look at in this playthrough. What other teams can we explore? So Plimbo would give us fleece tokens for giving him eyes of the witnesses which is absolutely fantastic because we had two eyes at the moment and there were just two bosses to go. I also went up to the Lonely Shack here today and it was time to take on Flinky in a game of knuckle bones. It was important to take on all of the knuckle bones NPCs in the game if we wanted to get all of the tarot cards that the game had to offer. For example, this one here, immune to poison is super handy, especially if you're using the golden fleece like I do, it's something you don't want to stand in too much. Next up it was Clunko and Bob and we defeated him easy enough as well and that rewarded us with another 
really nice tarot card. So we went back into Anchor Deep today and this time we were met with spider enemies. And these enemies don't really appear inside this dungeon, it's just because they were part of the boss event. But normally when you come in here you don't see those enemies at all. So we finally made it to the main boss room and this boss is called Calamar and this is the third of the main bosses you fight in this game. We did however come in with some serious weapons, we had a 285% damage output along with a hammer weapon. So as you can see we just hit Calamar a few times with the hammer and it wiped out most of its health. We did take some damage however by setting our damage output back to 0% but the hammer was still strong enough to get the job done even with a 0% bonus damage output. That was another heart for us, and we went back to the barn. We were met with all our lovely cozy tozy cultists. They were super happy to see us. This was also a great time to do some mass inspiring and get some loyalty levels going with all of these cultists. With all of our new resources on hand, it was time to create some advanced structures. So these were faith structures, and they're basically little shrines that would allow your followers to put offerings on them every single day. So accumulating tons of these shrines is a great way to stack up on tons of resources. It's time for another ascension. Alex has reached the age of 57, well past his prime. He did have a rough start with us however, especially with those poop balls, but he made it. And now he can ascend to the great beyond. Thank you for your service, Alex. And everyone was super happy for the ascension, lots of levels up. It was time for another dungeon crawl. Inside the Anchor Deep dungeon, we were looking for collectibles, we were looking for decorations, follower farms, and of course, another Eye of the Witness to get that chain quest going. So we had two Eye of the Witnesses gotten at the moment, we just needed two more, and we were on the verge of getting the third one, just right about now. With a bonus damage output of 155%, this witness didn't stand too much of a chance. Once this witness was defeated, we were rewarded with a follower, but more importantly, an eye of the witness, along with other valuable resources we can use, back on our lovely cozy farm. I did decide to not finish there though, I went for another loop, just fighting a regular mini boss this time, but more importantly, I wanted additional resources, so I could start mass producing structures on at the farm. The minions that spawned from this boss were very difficult to deal with because they kept charging me and they had spikes all over so even if I got close to retaliate I took damage but I did get there in the end and I got lots of cauliflowers as well. So this is the third loop and this boss was also very irritating because it released fireballs in all different directions and I got hit a good few times which means I couldn't stack damage using the golden fleece. However, like all other bosses in the game eventually I whittled down its health and came out victorious. Bart, Lisa, Homer, Marge and Maggie, the Simpsons were ready to join our lovely cozy cult. Here's hoping they can get on well with our lovely Stardew Valley NPCs. It was time for another cozy ascension, Demetrius was past his prime, not much good to us anymore but he did serve us well. Let's meet again Demetrius in the great beyond, look how happy everybody was at his ascension, lots of level ups there. It took me almost a whole day to level up each individual cultist from the XP they got from Demetrius, but we'd be better off for it in the long run because all these cultists will now perform much better when it comes to mission tasks, future ascensions and sacrifices. I also made some more grand shelters today because those buildings never break down and I even got a prison built at the bottom left hand side of the farm. This means if any future cultists end up dissenting against me, I can just put them into the prison and re-educate them, no problem at all. Later on that day I went straight back into the Anchor Deep dungeon and I got the last decorative collectible I needed, which was the crystal flag that was all decorative items gotten now inside the Anchor Deep dungeon. A new day, a new member joins our cult. This one is called Rick. I also got all the cultists today to make more offering statues. The more offering statues we had on the farm, the more offerings I could collect every single day. Look at all the offerings I can collect now. Fish, wood, gold, stone. It was all for the taking. Shortly after, I met Jodie who had a quest for me. Jodie wanted a day off, not just her, she wanted everyone to have a day off, she wanted me to perform the Holy Day Ritual. I accepted of course, and decided everyone deserved a good day off. This is a huge faith booster as well, so I put my faith straight back up to the top. So I spent the day going around all these lovely houses collecting gold. The reason why they were given gold is because I had maxed out devotion, and I had every single structure unlocked. I could now make any structure I wanted in the game, provided I have enough materials to do so. 
Afterwards, I went down to the smuggler's sanctuary and I purchased all of the tarot cards there because I had so much gold to do so. I also gave Plimbo his third eye of the witness, which in turn rewarded me with another fleece token. He just needed one more eye and that would complete his chain quest, which was great. So you've probably noticed by now that I haven't been using any other fleeces in the game. Reason being, I don't need to. The gold fleece is by far, in my opinion, the ultimate fleece, especially when it comes to killing bosses as quickly as possible. So it was another day on the farm and it was time to make the farm look good. I started building some more grand shelters because my cultists were growing in numbers. I made a confession booth there too at the bottom left of the farm, that's really good for increasing loyalty for cultists as well, and I just made more lumber mills and stone yards. Took a quick trip to Pilgrim's Passage and I was able to get the last decorative items needed to complete the Darkwood collection. So we were well on our way to getting 100% on this game. Maru unfortunately died of old age, so we packed her up, put her in a compost bin, she would be used for fertilizer later on down the road. Thank you Maru for your service. Later on that day it was time for another ascension. Clint had served us well and it was time to send him to the great beyond. Look how happy everyone is. Goodbye Clint, may we meet again in the future. So we got huge loyalty bonuses from sacrificing Clint. <laughs> so this time we had a quest to go back to Aranu and get that follower and bring him home. We also took on a mini boss here as well just to get some more resources. That mini boss died in literally no time at all because we had a damage output of 300%. 41 pumpkins in the bag along with some bones and some gold. I love getting floors like this where you just get tons of stone or wood or crops. It's always a great way to stock up on resources. So it was time to fight Hecate again. The reason why I wanted to fight him again is because I wanted to get some bonuses to resources. I like per usual. <laughs> he died in a few strikes. Drop the chest and I got lots of gold and bones from killing him. When I went back to the farm there was a few deaths. Jazz unfortunately died of old age. Picked her up straight away before more people could puke on her and put her inside the compost bin and we'd use Jazz for fertilizer later on. I then went into the silk cradle and we fought the first mini boss in the silk cradle which was a giant insect. So I froze him up, struck him a few times and sent him straight back to hell. The trend continues, every time I go for a dungeon crawl somebody dies, this time it was Kent, died of old age, at least it was old age and it wasn't from a plague or you know someone killing him in the shadows. <laughs> so today it was time for confessions, I was going to bring loads of people in here today and we were going to get them to confess, this time it was Robin and Robin told me like what most wives tell their husbands, one isn't making enough money and she didn't like the food that I cooked. But we got over that and it was straight back into a dungeon, the Silk Cradle, to complete the main quest of the game. We just had one god left to destroy. But we weren't just going for the main quests, we were going for 100% completion, which means there was still plenty days left in this challenge to platinum the game. We also came across a special room with a sign pointing to Minas' cave. That opened up a new location on our map. What fun we are going to have in that location later on. So it was finally time to fight another miniboss. This was a giant centipede and this centipede occasionally shrouded itself in spikes, meaning if we got too close we would take damage, but we can always rely on our lovely ranged magical abilities to kill it in no time at all. So we got beetroot seeds there as a reward, and that's a new crop we can now grow on the farm. When we came back to the farm, of course, someone else died of all ages time, it was Krobus. Poor Krobus, but not to worry my friend, you would be put in the compost bin and used as a fertilizer. It was time for a new theme, and this time we were bringing Tony Stark on board. What a great cultist he will be. So we went to Minas' cave and we spoke to Midas. And he told us all about his lovely cave and about how gold basically runs the whole show here. So we put lots of gold bars into this well here, which activated a quest. And we also had a sacrificial altar here as well. So I had a few old cultists that I could sacrifice. We had Jody, Lewis and Manny. I turn all of them into the sacrificial chamber and Midas was quite happy with that. For every follower I sacrificed, I was rewarded <laughs> with a fleece token. So I could sacrifice a total of four followers, which means Midas would give me a total of four fleece tokens. So I spent a lot of gold today on decorative items that I could buy inside Midas' cave. This would save me time from doing dungeon crawls as well to get those items inside the dungeons. I also bought up all of the tarot cards as well. There were some interesting ones there and I also found 
a follower farm as well. It looked like a star drop, which was pretty cool. It was time to go forward and find our friend lurking in the darkness. The last time we found this guy, we gave him a fish and he gave us a fleece token. Let's see what we'll ask for this time. So we encountered this guy four times in total. This time he was talking about followers. So he was really hungry this time and he said food was sparse. Too many predators out. And there wasn't a whole lot of prey to go around, so he wanted me to give him one of my followers. So I had a quick look at my list and I noticed Vincent was 57 years of age, way past his prime. It was only a matter of time before he would turn old and be not as useful to me. So I decided to give Vincent to this lovely redeemer to have as dinner. Thank you Vincent for your lovely sacrifice. As a reward I got another fleece token, thank you very much. So it was back on the lovely cozy tozy farm and we were making more machines that generated wood and stone. Once all these machines were built it was time to really expand on the farm. I built loads of farming plots and all this was now automated because of the farmhouses that I also had put down as well. So this time we were going to get Steve Rogers and we were going to get Thor added to our lovely cold welcome, our latest team of Avengers. We now had Tony Stark, Steve Rogers and Thor. I felt so safe. Look at all of the offering statues we had now on the farm. We had tons of them. Resources were now simple to come by. So, I went back into the dungeon today, Silk Cradle, to continue the main quest. I came across an NPC called Shroomy and he challenged me to a game of Knucklebones. We'll take him up on that challenge later on. For now, we had a god to kill. So it was back to slaying insects and killing gods. This new god, Shamara, was indeed the sneaky god. He managed to turn Steve Rogers against me and some other Stardew Valley NPC. They all looked alike, so I didn't know which one they were, but they died by my hand nonetheless. Because NPCs died, Robin decided to descend against me. I'd have to handle that later on. For now, I had a mini boss to kill, and it was very difficult to avoid the attacks unleashed by this one. It was firing fireballs all over the place. Eventually I did kill it. <laughs> so Bruce Banner, T Challa and Clint Barton were all new additions to our lovely Cozy Tozy farm. We also got one the Maxim off the boot as well. One of the most powerful witches in the universe. <laughs> we were assembling quite the team. So I went to my wife Robin to try to calm her down, to try to speak some sense into her and to try to restore her faith in the Cozy Tozy farm. However, she wasn't giving me any attention. So I picked her up and thrown her in prison and hopefully Within a few days, she'd be back to her normal self again. So I tried re-educating her, she was having none of it today. We'll try again tomorrow. So we went back to Minas' cave. Rasmodius was past his prime. I decided to offer him up as a sacrifice to Minas to get the final fleece token that he had to offer. Goodbye Rasmodius, thank you so much for your contribution. The next day we went back into the silk cradle to fight a god, but first we wanted to stock up on lovely beetroots. This will allow us to make some awesome recipes going forward. It was time to fight Shamara. Turned into a giant spider of course, I wasn't surprised with that as most enemies I fought were spiders. He did die very quickly, I only had a 95% bonus damage output, but it was enough to send this guy packing very quickly indeed. Most of his attacks were easy available, I just had to roll behind him and just keep hitting him from behind. Eventually, he perished and I was able to take his heart and that was the last heart of the heretic that I needed to unlock all of the lovely dungeon crawling passive abilities. I also got a Shamara trophy, which was a really good cool decorative item, and that completed all of the decorative items for the Silk Cradle Zone. It was now time to head back to the Cozy Tozy farm and await my lovely loyal followers. I had Stardew Valley Pelican Townies, I had Avengers, I had Simpsons, I had Ricks and Martys. I didn't think there was anything that could come close to taking over this cult. It was also time for another fabulous ascension. Willy is now well past his prime, it was time to send him to the great beyond. Thank you so much Willy for your service. So today I visited my wife Robin locked up in prison. I decided to re-educate her on the faith of the cozy tozies, but she was having none of it and told me to get lost. I would try again the next day. I also made loads of food and had all my cultists eat it in front of Robin just so I could try to give her some extra motivation. It was now time to head up to the one who waits, the one that gave me a second chance at life. Let's see what happens. 
So I have completed all of the main objectives. I have fought all four old gods and I have destroyed them. I did however refuse to kneel to the one who waits and decided that I should keep the red crown and become a god myself. The one who waits was not happy about this and sent his underlings to fight me, first being Baal. Baal was a difficult fight indeed. I suppose the main reason why it was so difficult it was because my first time fighting this boss was my first time getting this far. I never actually got this far before. But I did have some decent weapons, I did have some decent experience and I was able to beat him without too much difficulty. Next up we had another boss similar to Baal and this guy just flung fire circles all over the place like they were nothing. I did however beat him after a few strikes, no biggie. It was now time for the main event, Lamb vs God, who would win? So he somehow managed to break out of his chains, how he did that, who knows, I suppose it was because the old gods were dead, so technically he was free. I did however pummel him around the place and dropped him down to the lower levels here. I got this really cool scene and he re-emerged as this thing that looked like Stephen King's It starving for a kid. So eyes popped out of his head, three eyes in total. The main strategy here was to kill the eyes to whittle down his health and dodge his attacks as best as I could. So the eyes did occasionally surface, when they did it was time to give them a battery. When they went back underground I couldn't actually fight them, occasionally the boss did use special attacks like that, but most of those attacks were fairly simple to avoid. Dodging was key of course, as when you rolled you did have invincibility frames. So eventually I was able to whittle down the boss's zero health, pummeled him to death, and a cool cutscene emerged. A little follower sprung forth from the boss. This was the true form of the one who waits, just a lonely follower. I had a choice to spare or murder him, I chose to spare him because murdering would just be too nice for this guy. Why not bring him back to my cult and make him work for the rest of his life? <laughs> I went from sacrificial lamb to overpowered lamb god, but the journey doesn't end there, oh no, we still had perfection to achieve, we had trophies to get. So it was time to indoctrinate the one who waits, he had a special perk here called immortal, which means he would never reach old age, this guy would last forever on our lovely cozy farm. I suppose so long as he remained healthy and he remained fed. So it was time to talk to Robin again and I had a lot to tell her about, about how I became a god, how I saved the village from catastrophes and it worked, Robin was super happy, it was time to release her from her prison. So I went back into the Silk Cradle dungeon for one reason and that was to get the eye of the witness because now a new witness boss would have emerged and killing that would be a piece of cake. With the last eye of the witness I would be able to complete another chain quest and get another fleece token. I also needed the resources to put more advanced structures on the farm. It was time to fight the last witness. So I came in here with 445% output damage. I got it in a hit just before I took one more or less one shot in the boss. <laughs> a new follower added to the cult and more importantly the last eye of the witness added to my inventory. So it was straight down into the smuggler's sanctuary to get that chain quest done. But before I went there I had to go quickly back to the farm as was a bit of a catastrophe going on here. Marilyn unfortunately died of old age. Not to worry though we would put him into our lovely compost bin. Marilyn would be used as fertilizer. Carl Denvers and Scott Lang welcome to the lovely Cozy Tozy Cult. After the mess was cleaned up, I went straight down into the smuggler sanctuary and I gave Plimpo here the last Eye of the Witness. This completed the chain quest and gave me another fleece token, which was absolutely marvellous. Back on the farm, it was time to collect more resources, make more advanced structures and make this farm look super cool. We just had a few more things left to do in order to get 100% achievement in this game. Firstly, we had to get more cultists, we had to get more decorations, we had to get more rare follower forms that required very specific actions. So I was back doing some more dungeon crawling today, I needed to get more food to keep the cultists alive and I also needed some other regular resources too to make some of the more unique decorations. Professor Snail unfortunately died of old age today, he was covered in sick and everything else but not to worry we wrapped him up and we ran down and put him into the compost bin for fertilizer. Morris also died of old age today and there was lots of <laughs> sick around him too, we minced up Morris because we didn't have room to put him into the compost bin. We did lose a lot of faith when that happened, but not to worry, we had access to lots of rituals to get the faith back up very quickly. 
So it was time for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Michelangelo, Leonardo, Raphael and Donatella all welcome to the lovely Cozy Tozy cult. It was time to ascend Mr. Key, he was now very old, wasn't much useful on the old farm, it was time to ascend him to the great beyond, goodbye Mr. Key. Thank you for all those lovely Skull Cavern chests. <laughs> so we got huge loyalty boosts there from that and it was time to take Shroomy on in Knuckle Bones to get another tarot card for winning the game. Now it did take me a few attempts, Shroomy did prove quite difficult. But it was worth it in the end, as we got a lovely tarot card, Strength From Within. Further will replenish slowly over time, which was kinda cool. It was now time to convert some of our most loyal cultists into demons. So Jerry was going to be converted into Arcus, Maggie was going to be converted into Vosicus, and Marty was going to be converted into Vesta. These lovely demons will follow me into the dungeons that I go into, and they will help me fight monsters. And because I had the demonic circle upgraded to rank number 3, I can bring in a total of 3 demonic creatures with me to help me wipe these enemies out. <laughs> now what fun we had today with these mini bosses. They stood absolutely no chance at all. So it was time to take on Leshy again and I only took him on because I wanted to get the bonus resources from killing him without taking damage. As we can see I had 615% bonus damage output. One attack from my magical ability put him down instantly. Not only will I get lots of rewards from that chest but look at all the lovely rewards we're gonna get here. Another day, another cult member dying of old age. This time it was Homer. Poor Homer. But not to worry, we were going to put him in the compost bin and use him for fertilizer for our lovely crops to keep our cultists fed. Thank you so much, Homer. It was time to visit our lovely red demon friend again and he gave us a very simple choice. We either sacrifice half of a heart permanently or two of our followers. It was a very difficult decision, but I decided to go with the followers because I had lots of followers that were either old or they were going to get old soon and they were going to be sacrificed regardless or ascended. So let's see who we had. We had Maggie at the age of 56. It was time to feed Maggie to the lovely cozy red demon. And we we're also going to pick Rick, who is now 50 years of age, more or less past his prime. Thank you very much for your service, Rick. But we have to feed you to the red demon in order to get our valuable fleece token thank you so much for joining and supporting the lovely cozy tozy cult <laughs> so the next day my wife robin came up to me and she said don't judge me but i've always wanted to eat a meal man of poop and you help me satisfy my dark desires i of course being the benevolent leader that i am said yes and i didn't just make one bowl of poop i made as many bowls of poop that i could because i wanted to unlock a secret follower farm that you can only get by making loads of bowls of poop. As I was cooking all these bowls of poop something really cool happened and loads of poop just flew out of the cauldron and also a follower farm. And it was a really cool looking follower farm as well basically you can get cultists that look like poops. It was time to contact our lovely red devil friend again and this time he wanted me to give him Ratau as a sacrifice for the final fleece token. Ratau said no don't trust him but it was too late, I needed the fleece token and I needed to get 100% completion. So I gave Ratau to our lovely red friend there for that final fleece token. He was really happy about that and I was really happy about it too because I was going to get a fleece token. I also got a follower for him. So I could now make followers that looked like Ratau, what better way to honour our lovely mentor. And that was the final fleece token that we needed, we now had all the fleece tokens the game had to offer, we could now make all the fleeces, no problem at all. So I went back into Anchor Deep today for two reasons, number one I needed crystals, and number two I could do with a few more cultists, as a lot of them were being sacrificed and dying of old age. I eventually got to the mini boss and I had a nice damage output of 340%, meaning it wasn't going to take a whole lot of strikes to kill this guy. The problem was he was teleporting all over the map, making him very hard to hit. But eventually we did get him. So we decided to do a loop as well and we just continued forward. This boss was very difficult so I decided to keep my distance and use magical abilities because I didn't want to take a hit and lose my bonus damage output. I managed to kill him too without taking any hits and as a result I got a 20% increase in resources found. More importantly, I got lots of crystals. Peter Griffin, Stewie Griffin, Brian Griffin and Lois Griffin. All welcome to the Cozy Tossy Cult. Today was a day of building, so I made more beds because I got 
few more cult members. I also made some statues over here that people can use to worship, which will generate even more money for me. And all these statues will eventually be upgraded as well to their final form. I also made loads of three star meals today because I had so much vegetables and resources gathered I could make the best food that the game had to offer. This would give great perks such as loyalty increases and faith increases upon eating the food. And I could make tons of this food because I just had so much stuff gathered. So I found these cool little snail statues all over the place and I had a few snail shells. And I managed to find them in each kind of unique location that you go to in the game. After completing all of these snail statues I was given a unique follower form. Which is a snail follower form which is pretty cool. So I almost had all of the follower farms completed, I was very close to getting 100% now of the game. So, Bebop wanted me to go back into Silk's credit today and get some silk. I actually said yes to this request because I needed to go in anyway and get silk for myself to make decorations. Because there's a lot of decorations I wanted to put on the farm to make it look really good that required a lot of silk. The next day was like most days, we had very happy cultists and we also had dead cultists that died of old age. Poor Tony Stark was very close to being an ascended member of the cult, however he died so he had to go into the compost bin. We would use Tony as fertilizer to improve the quality of our lovely crops. Thank you so much Tony. I also emptied all of the outhouses and it was time to get more cultists. This time we were going for Meg Griffin. Meg. Welcome to our lovely cozy farm. Stewie had a request, wanted me to get some mushrooms inside Anura. I said of course. So it was time for another dungeon crawl, it was time to get more mushrooms. I also needed the mushrooms to make some decorations, so it was a win-win scenario. Happy Stewie, and of course more decorations for us. So we had another death today unfortunately, and it was Wanda Maximoff. She just didn't make it to Ascension, so we were going to get Wanda run down to the huge giant compost bin and put her in it. We couldn't compost her straight away because Tony was still rotting away. So we got Tony out, got the fertilizer and put Wanda in there, no problem at all, and cleaned up the mess that was made. I also got a cool room here where you could chop down this tree. Instead of pressing A to cut it with my regular red crown tool, I just hit it with the axe. It was also time to fight some bosses in the Anura section to get some mushrooms. Unfortunately, I did take some damage so I wasn't going to get any sort of bonus resources, but that was okay. Clint Barton returned and he managed to find me a follower. I totally forgot about sending him out on the mission. It was time to meet the new cultists. We had Eddard Stark, Rob Sansa and Iris Stark and even Bran Stark to join our lovely growing cult. Yes, we had the Starks. Things were looking up. It was time to ascend Clint before he died of old age because he completed such a difficult mission he deserved ascension, he deserved to go to the great beyond. After ascension the crowd boomed with excitement, look at all the level ups we are going to get. Bran had a quest for me today, he wanted me to invite in two new cultists but he said they were very sick. No problem at all Bran, anything for you. Bran the Broken. So we got in Rickon Stark and Jon Snow. More lovely Starks to join our family and the Targaryen of course. <laughs> but Jon Snow is a bit unique so he could come in no problem at all. It was time to finally decorate up the farm and make it look awesome. The next 10 days were spent putting decorations on the farm and gathering resources to make this farm look absolutely amazing. So I started making all different manner of decorations. I also unlocked all of the fleeces. This is the fleece of the glass cannon. This is the fleece of the diseased heart. This is the fleece of the fates. And this is the fleece of fragile fortitude. We finally got to day 100. This is what our lovely cozy tozy farm looks like. What a challenge it was to get 100% on this game. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. It would really help me grow. I'm trying to hit 100,000 subscribers this year and I feel really confident I can do it. More 100 day type videos are coming. That's all I'm going to be making for the next couple of months. So strap yourselves in and prepare for a 100 day type video to get released every single week. That is what you are in store for if you subscribe to this channel. So don't miss out. Subscribe and get notified. I hope to see you all in the next video and I hope you have a great week. Bye for now.